Brian, thank you for being a, a friend. Thank you for loving us. I'm always encouraged with Brian. I, I love to laugh. We just laugh when we're together, and I, I just love it so much. I think the last meeting, I, come on up. I think the last meeting I went to of yours, I crashed it, and just you didn't get to do anything else but love me, and I really appreciate that so much, man. Bless you. Awesome. Praise Jesus. How's everybody doing? Doing good? Wow. Always uh, um, such an honor to be here. And yeah, we'll just see where we get. I feel in my center. <laughs> I feel symmetrical. There we go. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. How many of you feel the presence of God here? I really love the presence of God. <clears throat> so, so good. So, yeah, before we. Um, get started and kind of see where we end up. Uh, just really want to honor uh, Pastor Randy, Pastor Lucy, if you'd give them a hand, a dwelling place search. Yeah. Uh, Pastors Jeff and Elizabeth, the whole team, you know, yeah. <clears throat> um, I always tell them this, um, that it's like the dream team. Josh, John, man, the handsome beard's going this time. I mean, fades, these guys. Uh, but just dwelling place, it feels like home, and uh, <laughs> they know I love them. And, uh, you know, it's just a rare house. I, I don't know, you know, I know a lot of you know it, but some of you may not, and I think it's just good sometimes to hear from an outside voice. They're just super rare, full of integrity, love, the power of God, the Spirit, so full, and it feels like family. And uh, Corey Russell, love you, man. Give him a hand. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, his beautiful daughter, uh, man, I'm stoked for tomorrow. Corey's a hero of mine. He's just a general, and uh, I want to preach as fast as I can in the morning so I can hurry and sit in his session. <laughs> but uh, I love and honor him big time. And uh, my son, Judah, if you want to stand. Yeah. Strapping young man. He's 16 now. Shaved this morning, the top lip. <laughs> Super proud of him. You know. <laughs> but uh, super proud of him. Loves Jesus and goes for it. Yeah, my, uh, my daughter Zoe would love to have been here, but we just got a... It's kind of like a dog. Have you ever seen an English bulldog? <laughs> They're like, oh my goodness, man. He's just super fat and, uh, and wide shoulders, and he just wants to eat. That's all he ever wants to do is eat. And, um, but she's taking care of him, and, and so that's awesome. But anyway, I'm excited. Um, we'll just kind of see where we end up. I had a dream last night that I want to sort of share quickly and, and go there, and then, and then the secret place, and I get to be with you all again in the, the morning as well. And um, how do you know God speaks through dreams? Yeah, praise God that he does. And um, how many of you have a prophetic dreams quite a bit? Oh, wow. So some of you don't. How many of you just don't want to raise your hand? <laughs> Lazy folks. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. But, uh, oh, yeah, and the worship was incredible. Oh, my goodness. So powerful. The Drone Place team and the, the women up here, um, the, the lady with the bun. Oh, my goodness, man. She started doing it. Ooh, and I was like, it's over. Uh, it's over. Seriously. Oh, my goodness. I, I, was, I leaned over to Josh. I was like, I need that recorded, like, ASAP for the secret place, but so amazing. So, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a quick dream, and um, really, I'm excited because some of you know if God speaks, it's just everything. His voice is everything to me. I don't really care what he has to talk about anymore. It's just speak. Your voice is life. Your presence is life. And uh, he's just everything. So... And how many of you know whether, whether it's corrective, you know, insightful, warning, whatever it may be, it's always love. He, God is love. And so um, this, this quick dream I could see, and I won't be on this too, too long, and we'll just see where we end up. Oh, hopefully, too, uh, are we kind of watching a time or not really? Um, <laughs> I just didn't know. You got to honor authority. And, 
And, um, but if we can, it may be awesome. Just I love about night sessions. It's just uh, practically you, you have the chance. We can maybe lay hands on people if it's okay. And Because, uh, you know, you, when you're in sessions with people behind you, a lot of you don't think about this, but in ministry, you have to be mindful so there's not bodies laying everywhere. And, you know, so maybe if we have time, that would be awesome. How many of you believe in the laying on of hands? It, yeah. I just, how many of you just love the Bible, all of it? Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I want it all, man. Just even Leviticus. I, I mean, not my favorite, but I'll take it. <laughs> you know, um, one of my favorite verses is in the book of Job. Surprisingly, it's Job twenty nine six. He says, "Oh, it, if it were in the days of old, when my feet were bathed in butter," and it speaks of just favor and acceleration, just slipping through with the favor of God. And how many of you want feet bathed in butter? Yeah. Well, sometimes when you lay hands on people, the power of God hits them and it's like butter, just fuel. <laughs> it's just, but Dwelling Place has some of the best catchers in the world. And, and uh, dream team, dream team. So, but I love it. But really, biblically, the laying on of hands, it's all throughout scripture and uh, a lot happens. You know, I remember one uh, uh, person just came to me quickly because he mentioned dreams. Um, uh, laid hands on and it's all Jesus. Thank goodness. You know, we, we don't have anything really to do with other than loving him and trying to obey him. But after I laid hands on this, um, it was actually a wife of a couple. She had dreams for three months straight, 90 days boom, 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 from God. And I love that, you know, you just impartation happens. Like he said, dreams and visions. It's Joel two that then kicked off an ax to, you know, it says in the last days, how many believe we're in the last days? Yes, yeah, it's, it's so clear. It obviously started in the book of Acts, but we're even closer now than ever before. And so the Holy Spirit comes upon people. They begin to go into supernatural dreams from God. Visions, your eyes open up in the spirit. And uh, healings and bodies, impartation of gifts. And I love that, that Pastor Randy mentioned that. And, you know, I just want the same for myself. And so if we have time, we'll, we'll go there. So anyway, this dream was real simple. Uh, last night, I'll typically see things like this before I go speak. And... I could see uh, people that were uh, getting a little too close to, um, you know, the things of the world, so to speak, and, and sin and things like this, and which we've all been there, we get it, but I think it's just God's goodness at times that he, he's like, wait, 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 you know, and he'll veer us back into the highway of holiness, and uh, it's beautiful. So I've got one passage that, to me, coincides with this. I'll read fast, and then... We'll pray together corporately, and it's a lot of fun. You'll feel it lift and just a, a hunger for purity again. How many of you know Jesus steps on purity? Of all people that foran for Jesus Christ, he sent John the Baptist, who no miracles, no wonders that I know of, but he preached repentance, and he made the crooked path straight because Jesus steps on the highway of holiness. I'm telling you, man, sometimes all it is, the slightest tweaks in purity that is, that is delaying the fullness of Jesus to step in. It's awesome. I've seen it in my own life, you know, little foxes, things like this. He's like, yeah, or, or sometimes some seasons he's, he's gracious. And, you know, even children, it's okay if they knock a sippy cup off the, the table. But as you get older and you keep knocking sippy cups off, something's wrong, you know. <laughs> so a lot of times it's a seasonal thing. It's a mature thing, and he, he loves us. But um, I've just I've been sensing it more and more lately that he's just really calling a higher level. And he's given a grace for it, which is awesome. How do you know we can't live holy without him anyway? So when he speaks this way, we love to go here. And then a fresh grace will come. And those things that would attach, you know, the Bible even says to throw off those sins that so easily entangle. And there's just an ease to throw them off and go for him. And you wouldn't believe how Jesus would, would just blow in in a full way. Uh, dreams, just his voice and everything will come so clear. So... Um, if you want to turn to uh, um, 2 Timothy 2, if my iPad will go there. Yep, here we go. <clears throat> uh, chapter 2, verse 19. Won't be here long at all. We'll pray. Uh, it says this, this is Paul writing, but God's truth stands firm like a foundation stone with this inscription upon it. I'm in the new living, but you know, to each his own. It says this, the Lord knows those who are his and all who belong to the Lord must turn away from evil. Isn't that awesome? Who belongs to the Lord in here? 
Oh, now we're raising our hands. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm teasing with you. <laughs> so anyway, if we belong to the Lord, and I love this because there's a balance in truths. You know, sometimes, you know, if you love Jesus, of course, he pulls us into the ways of purity because he is holy. But sometimes there's a cooperation and we have to turn away from evil. You know what I mean? Like we have to throw off those sins that so easily entangle. Joshua 3.5, he says, look, purify yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do great wonders amongst you. And um, so those that know who are his must turn away from evil. And, uh, and look, I love this. This is Paul. He says, in a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver. And some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions. You guys know that? Usually they come out around Christmas time and things like that, the fancy stuff. And uh, anybody use paper plates in here? <laughs> I use a bunch of them, man. <laughs> Praise the Lord for paper plates. So watch this. So he's like, like, Paul, where are you getting that? You're talking about expensive, expensive, fancy gold, silver utensils, wood and clay, the mundane. And then he clicks right into purity. It's beautiful. Watch this. He says, um, if you keep yourself, there it is again. There's a cooperation. Some, some of us are like, well, I just love the Lord. I'm saved. It's got to be sovereign. He's got to do it. No, keep yourself pure. You turn away from evil, you know, and that's sometimes all he's waiting on. He's not going to force. He's going to lead and advise. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire. He advises, he counsels, he leads, but he doesn't force. And uh, so anyway, if you keep yourself pure, You'll be a special utensil for honorable use. Come on, man. I love that. See, it, he doesn't say if you study and get real polished at speaking, you know, thank God. I would totally never be a special utensil. Uh, he doesn't say if you connect or whatever it is. It's just how it connects directly to purity. If you keep yourself pure, you'll be a special utensil for honorable use. How many of you want to be the gold and silver utensils in life, you know? So it's like you've got the sporks, you know what I mean? You can stay in that mode and you'll still make the kingdom be saved to love you, but you won't be brought out for kingdom special purposes. Isn't that awesome? He says your life will be clean and you'll be ready for the master to use you for every good work. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, run from anything that stimulates youthful lusts. Instead, pursue righteous living. Pursue it. I love it. Hebrews 1.9 says, because Jesus Christ... He loved righteousness, and he hated wickedness. The God, his God, anointed him with the oil of joy. How many want more joy in your life? I, me too. It's amazing. So you'll always see the oil, the Holy Spirit of joy hit where righteousness is or hit to produce righteousness. It's connected, Isaiah 61. And so, but again, even the Lord, it says he loved, he pursued, he loved righteousness, and he hated wickedness. Not people, the wicked deeds and the things of this world. And we need it afresh. You can feel it in this hour, this stiff arming of, of wickedness. And, um, oh, yeah, sorry, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. And then it goes on. So anyway, that's all. Just from this dream last night, you can even stay where you're seated. How many of you know repentance is super simple? It's just praying, and it's a heart turn, and then his grace comes, and then we live it out. You know what I mean? Um, you don't have to come down here and beat your chest and, oh, yeah, you can, I won't care, but, um, <laughs> but it's like you're going one way and you repent and turn another way. And then so like we're hopping around like sporks this way and then bam, gold and silver utensils. Yeah. And it's instantaneous. He didn't say, look, you've got to be qualified now and pay the price and go around mountains for years. No, just keep yourself clean and pure. Go from a spork to a gold and silver utensil overnight. Oh, sorry, do you guys in the other nations know what sporks are? <laughs> They're like, nope. <laughs> anyway, you don't want to know. <laughs> so, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so, so let's pray. You want to just put your hand on the heart and, and uh, we'll pray. <laughs> it's getting good up in here, man. <laughs> so, this just feels happy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to pray. All right. So, if you want to repeat after me, it, sometimes it's just a, a good corporate thing. Say, Lord Jesus, wash me in your blood. 
Make me clean that I may be a special utensil for your kingdom. In your precious name, amen. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Yeah, he's so good. Yeah, so we'll close that and then. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> But it's so good because, you, you know, you, <laughs> yeah, Let me go over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's so good because. Yeah, because he's good. I don't know. I was trying to, <laughs> trying to come up with something profound. That didn't work at all. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Bible says that he... Uh, that Jesus was anointed with the oil of joy, you know? It's really amazing, he was super happy. How many of you know Jesus was like, elevated him above his companions? Um, and sometimes when the Holy Spirit moves, people get a little uncomfortable and um, I totally un get it, you know? But one of the main fruits of the Spirit is joy. And so I say just let him touch you, you know? I'm, I remember we were in a meeting and, and um, yeah, the Holy Spirit, you know, broke in and you, you begin to see uh, joy hit. And uh, this one later, we found out she was a judge, actually, very professional, high up judge, business lady. And she was in the crowd going, you know, what is this? You know, preach or whatever. And um, all of a sudden she felt a force hit her from behind, like boom, run into her. And she was just couldn't control, hysterically laughing. You know, the joy, if you break it down, Hebrew, biblical, Hebrew and Greek, it means uh, hilarity or laughter. And so it's just awesome. He's filling people with that. But um, so if you feel, you know, the Holy Spirit come upon you or whatever, don't worry. I'm not like going to care. And uh, and the Bible says, while Peter yet spoke, the Holy Spirit fell on the people. So he may sneak up on you. I don't really have control over all that. But but if he does, just receive it. Thank you, Lord. So um, I want to talk to you real briefly about uh, intimacy, like, like Pastor Randy said, and, and then maybe leave time to, to lay hands on you guys. And, and um, yeah, we'll see where we'll end up. But I'll say this real quick, and, and it may carry over into tomorrow morning, but I've been on this one for quite a while. Some of you may, probably have heard me share it, but uh, out of Matthew 25, it's one of my favorite parables that Jesus shares, and I just want to stay on that for a little bit, and hopefully it will land. But it's, we all know it. You don't need to turn there. But it's the parable with, that I believe speaks within the church, of the ten bridesmaids. Um, you guys remember that one? Uh, one of my favorites because it's just intimate. It's got the bridegroom in there. And you often have parables of... Um, you know, the, the sheep and the goats or the wheat and the tares and the kingdom differentiation and all this. But this, I believe, speaks within the church, which would be most of us here, you know. And if, you, if you're not born again, you know, if you say you don't know where you'll spend eternity, just come pray with us. We'd love to lead you to the Lord. But uh, I know most in here are born again. So it's real, it's real simple. Jesus says there were ten bridesmaids. It's a parable. You guys remember this one? Yeah. And... Uh, and he says they were all going to find the bridegroom. Jesus, red letters, 10 bridesmaids. So it's an intimate slant. And I know it's an end time one, but I believe it, it applies today as well. And it says they all had lamps and were going to find the bridegroom. All had lamps, going to find the bridegroom. Everything's lining up. They're all the same, all 10. And then all of a sudden, if you read further, it says that five, this is in Jesus' assessment. He says five of them were foolish and five were wise. And that's when you really kick back like, okay, I need to know here. You know what I mean? How many of you want to be wise bridesmaids? Yeah, me too. Special utensils. Yeah. Sporks. Okay. <laughs> just, just testing you. Testing the internationals. 
No, I'm teasing. So he basically lines them up, 10, five and five, five are foolish, five are wise. And he, he basically said the only thing that set them apart was the five foolish did not bring enough oil in their lamps. They're all dressed the same. They all have, everything's fine. They're all going the same direction, the bridegroom king, Jesus Christ. And that's where we're all going here. But I, I think far too often within the body of Christ from Jesus' assessment, a lot of us don't have enough oil. And by his calculation, it's foolish. So it's like, help me, Lord, help me. I've been there plenty. I, you can, I can tell when I don't have enough oil. I can tell. You guys know what I mean? And, and we don't want to be there. People that are full of oil, like can you imagine um, a big jug, like right here, big barrel. And you fill it slam full of oil. You can't even bump the thing, and it's, it's leaking over. It's touching everything in its world. You barely bump it. It's oil's falling out everywhere. If it's quarter of the way full, you can kick it, bump it, put it in any situation. As oil's not coming out. And a lot of times in, in life, I feel like I was just sensing it lately that we need to get back to the good old like fasting and praying and long times of prayer being with the Lord, you know, well, that's works brother. You know, it's like Jesus says, return to the works you did at first in the book of revelation, that discipline, that just fervency, that, that residing, abiding, dwelling, uh, you know, that hunger, man, he's possessing a people. And I want to be on the wise side with way too much oil. And so, um, so he says, that was the only problem. Even if you read later, uh, it's just starting to feel good in here. I can feel it. If you read later, um, the, they all fall asleep. All of them. You would have thought that would have been the rebuking point. Like they weren't sober and alert and ready. But no, that, Jesus was like, that's fine. How many of you know you're going to have casualties in life? You'll drop the ball. You may not always be just perfectly sober. You fall asleep. They were, they were you know, tired. Didn't have a problem. But it says at midnight, a cry came. The bridegroom has come. And, and midnight, obviously, prophetically and, and symbolically represents a new day. And I really feel, and I've been feeling this even over the body of Christ and shared it quite a bit, but I, I feel like a lot of you, even like Pastor Randy said this, this week is going to be very pivotal. It's going to be a new day so to speak. I'm telling you, it, you've come up to a point and you feel like there's got to be an, and if you read further, there's a doorway there. And I love it when there's intimacy with Jesus, there's usually always a door. Revelation 3:20. behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anybody hears my voice and opens it, I'll come in, dine with him and he with me. Go into your closet, Matthew 6, shut the door behind you. There's just always a door. So sometimes in the secret place, if we're not careful, Jesus can be on the other side of the door and we need him on the inside. We need to be on the inside of whatever side he's on. You know what I mean? I don't care if he's outside, inside, on top of it. Like we gotta be there. And so it says a, a, a cry came at midnight, which speaks of a new day. Tonight, today is what day? Uh, Wednesday, um, at midnight, it'll shift into Thursday, obviously. Thursday at midnight, Friday. So midnight speaks of a new day, brand new season, brand new shift, brand new, uh, you know, access of the call. And um, obviously he comes, shouts, this, that, and the other. And then this is where the foolish and the wise separate. They wake up, go to light their lamps. In the oil, I know oil is typically Holy Spirit and Scripture and it's probably prophetic for various reasons in this passage. But to me, I really liken it to the secret place that keeps that flame of first love burning bright. Because if you notice, anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself, but um, they get up, all light their lamps and to make them ready to step through that doorway with the bridegroom. And the foolish go, oh my goodness, we don't have enough oil to keep that flame of first love burning bright to get us through that doorway to access the bridegroom. We don't have enough. And how many of you far too often, I know I've been here plenty in our walk with the Lord, we just get just enough oil, just enough time with the Lord in the day because I'm busy now. Just enough devotion that you, you're never too busy. I don't care how important it seems. He's the utmost priority of all of life, period. Everything is secondary to him. Everything. I don't care what we've got to do. The secret place has just got to be the central hinge pin of all of our life swings on. And um, so they get up. Uh, they go, oh, my goodness. So they tried to borrow more oil from the wise. And the wise would have loved to, but they were like, we can't give you our oil. 
How many of you know Pastor Randy can't give you his secret place? It can't be done. That's the whole thing. It's an intimate one-on-one deal. I can't give you mine. Corey can't give you his secret place. Trust me, he'd love to. But he can't. So they're like, we, we can't. You've got to go buy your own. Secret place will cost you. I'm telling you, Jesus says, I, I advise you in, in the context of secret place, um, Laodicea, end, end of the church age, he says, I advise you, I counsel you, buy for me gold refined by fire, which gold refined by fire is the purest form, super costly, that you may have white garments, I have, and so forth. So um, in, in, don't get me wrong, I know the delight of the secret place, that's where it's all at, but sometimes we're, depending on where we're at, you know, in our assessment with the Lord, we've got to pay a price up front. Sometimes discipline takes you to delight. Are you guys tracking with me? I just, I've heard both, and it's all truths. It's all scriptural. But they had to go buy So they leave the foolish. They go buy their own oil. Come back. I hate this part of the Bible, but it's in there. <laughs> and it says, the door was already shut. And the Lord, just like Matthew 7, he's like, I don't know y'all. Don't know you intimately. It's like, but I had oil my whole life, even to get up to this door. I, I loved you. My whole goal was to come find you. You didn't have enough oil when I was here. And I, I, you know what I mean? I know it's, it's a little heavy, but it's, it's awesome because we're all going to leave here with like jugs of oil all over the place. You know, I pray and even for myself. So, um, but he came, there was a doorway of a new day. And the only thing that could get him through it was extra oil which is the secret place. It keeps that flame on that lamp burning so bright, you don't see anything else. You, you just don't. You're just so addictive, man. He can open any door at any given time when there's extra oil, he's just blowing through the doorway. It's so bright, all you see is him. You guys know what I mean? And um, that would be a people, man, that I, I, I visualize it, you know, as olive oil being used in that day to burn, that the secret place, time with the Lord, that price paid, going into your closet, shutting the door behind you, like causes a shaking. I shared this before, but causes a shaking of the olive tree. And the olives begin to fall as you spend time with the Lord, more time in his presence, hours in the word of God. And I'm not talking about legalism here. I'm talking about infatuation, honing in and carving out a place of just the bridegroom. This is, this wasn't even friendship talk. This is the bridegroom, bridesmaid, you know what I mean? And how many of you want to be like the, the spirit and the bride say come, like brides, bridesmaids, yep. And so I feel like it, the more time in his presence that the, the olive tree is being shook, the olives are falling down. His presence comes in. The word of God begins to crush the olives and produce more oil. And the more we stay on this, we've got so much oil we don't know what to do with. You, you guys following me? Extra oil and, and slipping through that doorway. And so um, I just, that, that's mostly it. I could go on and on, but I'll, I'll overlap probably more, more into tomorrow on the secret place. But it would be... Um, on the side of the wise bridesmaids, that we'd get extra oil. We, we'd pay the price in the secret place, you know what I mean? Um, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Those that draw near to God, he'll draw near to you, you know? And sometimes it just takes a practical um, rearranging our schedule. I mean, l- lately, I mean, I was, I was thinking about it, and, um, uh, you know, it's probably over the last month, I'll only have been home for like three days. So we're busy, you know, and, and all of us could say this. And how many of you know, too, just as life, you get older, you get more busy. Some of the older, older is like, nope, I retired. <laughs> you know, it's like, but you know what I mean? You get kids, you know, work increase and things like this. But how you choose your schedule will always, sh- you know, how you, yeah, yeah, how you choose your schedule will always show me or anybody else what you prioritize in life. You guys know what I mean? And I've just been feeling the Lord more and more just like really getting into the fine details of my schedule. Um, How many of you know when you start to have little to no time, time becomes very valuable and you want to spend it wisely. And I say spend it with the Lord and family, of course, but all the other stuff, you're going to start feeling all the spirit like, give me that, give me that, cut that out. You don't need it. No, no, give me you know, you're going to feel a tug and he's going to call you and there's going to be oil. Um, 
uh, just as of late to my assistants, no, I sort of taking certain days, we just shut it down. They, you know, I'll get back to you when I can. You just got to sometimes. Just shut it down and, and uh, be filled with the Lord. Let oil begin to just stack up. Be hoarders of oil. This is one of the few times in Scripture that Jesus condones excess. He just said, he didn't say how much extra. He just said they had extra wise. Not enough foolish. His love for, for them was the same, but the lack thereof calculated as, as foolishness versus wise. And so that we'd pray and be like, Jesus, make me, you know, a bridesmaid with so, so much oil. And I love that Pastor Randy said that because you may be like, oil? What secret place? What? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like intimacy? What? You know, where we're different, you know, where we're at spiritually. Um, is, I know it's different in here, but if basically to intimately relate to the Lord and know him through prayer. And if you... You know, if you're not hungry, you say, I don't know how, you just be real. You just go into your closet, shut the door behind you, begin to cry out to him. You don't need to be like, Father in heaven, how, you know, and you just be real. Say, Lord, I'm, I'm hungry. I, I don't know you. I want to know you. I want more oil. Show me how. And just wait and wait and don't come out till he comes. I'm telling you. That sometimes he'll come at the last minute. You'll be in three hours, and then whew, he'll just possess you, and it'll transform you for a month. Give you a revelation that'll transform the next 10 years. You, you never know. 21 days, Daniel fasted. Elijah prayed seven times, and then the breakthrough came. Uh, Moses ascended the hill of the Lord, waited seven days, then, then the Lord came. Six, and then he stepped into glory. So I just, I, I can feel that too. I was feeling it earlier that um, I, I pray it just gets on all of us. But a new, like Pastor Randy prayed, stamina to just go for it. It's not legalism. It's just infatuation. Trust me. Once you do, it's like, what have I been doing my whole life? You guys know what I mean. You hit this ecstatic love wave, and you're just surfing like, I never want to come down. Never want to come down. This wind just hits the wings, and you soar to a place, and it's like, oh, my goodness. Uh, revelations come out of everything, his dreams, visions, your spiritual antennas are up and it's just, it's life. And so, so that's awesome. But if you want to stand, I told you it wouldn't keep you long, but now a bomb may go off. <laughs> we'll see. Um, thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and I think he's even going to just start giving creative, you know, practical ways to many of you on how to do schedule. You know, myself as well, husbands and wives have to be generous to each other and, and just figure it out. But uh, husbands and wives would say this, when your spouse is more full of the Lord, everything's better anyway, right? And they're like, oh, is it? You know what I'm saying? Uh, but just more oil will blow you through the doorways. And, and I wanted to mention that too. I believe it's obviously an end time parable, but I believe you can take it as installments of life too, where you can, as a doorway an, into a new day, the Lord's trying to pull you through and only extra oil will get you through it. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it's like you're up to a, a next level or, or so to speak, or a doorway into destiny. And he's like, yeah, no higher level now. Only more oil will get you through this door where it's gonna shut. You guys know what I mean? And so, um, so I say, just go for it. Be, cause, and the people will know, man. They're going to get around you and be like, something's different about you. You're super oily. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of gleaming. I don't, there's something very different about you. They can feel it. I'm telling you, they're different. Hoarders of oil are a different company. And uh, they just carry them in a special way. So, yeah, just begin to look to the Lord. I'm going to pray corporately and then... Maybe um, if we can lay hands or, yep. <clears throat> and uh, come on, Jesus. Yes, yeah, so just look to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're amazing. Thank you for purity. Thank you for the fear of the Lord that's full of love. Your loving kindness leads us to repentance. Thank you, Lord calling us to the highway of holiness, making us special utensils for your, your special use on special occasions. Yeah, and even now I pray for just a whirlwind of intimacy to hit this house. Such a grace, a stamina that you'd make us all wise bridesmaids, that we'd never be the same after tonight. We'd never look at life the same.
that intimacy with you would, would be the priority of all of life, your presence, your everything. I'm telling you, I can sense it right now with leaders, like even over programs and the things that want to start, you know, getting in the way. The blueprints of this, that, and other, they're from the Lord too, but never at the neglect of oil and intimacy. The planning, well, we got to strategize this. It, your strategies won't even work as, as potent as they need to be without oil. More, Lord. 